जी और कृष्ण श्री माता जी प्लीज टेक टेक ओवर द कॉल माता जी Hare Krishna. Uh, it's a great honor and delight for me to be introducing Her Grace Paneshwari Lakshmi Mataji with all excitement. Uh, Her Grace Paneshwari Lakshmi Mataji grew up in San Diego Temple community with her family, and she and her family has been a part of the congregation since 1970. Her Krishna consciousness began when her father was attracted to Sri La Prabhupada. because of his strict adherence to shastra and he became completely convinced of krishna consciousness by shrila prabhupada's challenging discussions with him a uh, personal discussions and uh, her grace paneshwari lakshmi mata ji uh, took up the process of krishna consciousness following in her father's footsteps she is an initiated disciple of his holiness jay pataka swami maharaj She serves as a teacher in New Govardhan Sunday School and also as a co-facilitator of the San Diego Vaishnavi Sangha. She also lovingly serves the deities of Sri Sri Radha Giridhari as a cook, pujari, and regularly goes out on book distribution. Mata Ji takes care of four generations under a single roof. She is a mother of four and a grandmother of many. she is also the greatest source of inspiration and a loving mother to everyone in bhakti sangha because she shows us by her example how to keep up different programs and different individuals in bhakti sangha tied together so we simply follow in her footsteps to maintain bhakti sangha as a unified family uh, she has been one of the oldest members of bhakti sangha since its inception and she has never missed a single class rain or shine she is with us she listens to every speaker with full sincere attention whether they are seasoned speakers or new speaker or whoever it may be and she encourages everyone with her valuable input guidance and enthusiasm uh, she takes the opportunity to learn even from the smallest kid and she treats everyone with love and affection she serves as an amazing speaker on bhakti sangha as well all the speakers wait for her realization and her matured inputs she is a gem of a person and an ideal woman so it is our great fortune to have her among us um we are also blessed to be in her association to be interacting with her on a regular basis um it's a rare opportunity actually so we are also fortunate to be with her and today mata ji will be speaking on the topic krishna pleases his devotees and i know how much meditation has gone into this topic for over a month so we are uh, really waiting to hear all the realizations from mata ji <laughs> please take over the call mata ji you can now start the wonderful presentation hari krishna oh krishna thank you prithvi lasni mata ji for that glowing <laughs> <laughs> going introduction you went over the top okay totally unnecessary but i accept that as going directly to my spiritual master his holiness jay pataka swami maharaj it's only by his example and trying to follow in his footsteps and um and you know as you said i've been meditating upon this chapter this story for many 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 weeks and um it's all i can say it's wonderful and i hope i can do justice to it it has so many layers to it that is i'm trying to un- unravel it um unfold it and enjoy it at the same time so let me start with the pranam mantra please yom agnana timirandasya gnana anjana salakaya chakshurun minitam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं वंदेह श्रीगुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांशीप साक्षात सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पदाश सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता नमा विष्णुपदाय कृष्णपुरस्ताय भूतले श्रीमदी जय पताक स्वामी नाम नमा विष्णुपदाय कृष्णपुरस्ताय भूतले श्रीमती भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे 
ನಿರ್ವಶೇಷಾಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿಚ್ಚಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಸೊ So the chapter I am doing is chapter 48 in the Krishna book and it's called Krishna pleases his devotees. Now as I was looking through the book I was trying to figure out what what should I talk about what should I you know what's chapter and of course Krishna pleases his devotees I mean that of course immediately attracted me how does Krishna please his devotees how does that happen what does that look like So I started reading this chapter Now my guru maharaj instructed me when I first ex- told him that I was going to give class for the first time and he told me always start with a verse so i had a verse in mind i was thinking about a verse is what i would, but then this other verse kept coming into my my vision it kept coming up all the time so let's chant this verse it's a famous verse we all know this one that te nu kampan su samiksha mano ಭುಂಜಾಂದೇವಾತ್ಮಕೃತಂ ವಿಪಾಕಂ ಋದ್ವಾಗ್ಭಪುರ್ಭಿರ್ವಿಧಗನ್ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಜೀವೇತೋ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಪದೆ ಸದಾಯ ಭಾಟ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಮೈ ಜಿಯರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಹು ಅರ್ನೆಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವೇಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟು ಬಿಸ್ಟೋ ಯುರ್ ಕಾಸ್ಲೆಸ್ ಮರ್ಸಿ ಅಪಾನ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವೈಲ್ಡ್ ಪೇಶಿಯಂಟ್ಲಿ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಿಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಪಾಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ ಡೀಡ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಯು ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಅಬೇಸನ್ಸಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ words and body is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim now that's a heavy verse it's heavy because we have to suffer through our our karmas but we have to still attach ourselves to the lotus feet of the lord now i don't know about you guys but that seems a little difficult to me understanding all the things that i have gone through in my life and that i will probably still go through in how many more lifetimes i don't know it's a little bit scary how does one do this how does one get this faith for this so one thing i want to read from the pur- from the purport of this chapter it says the purpose of the entire creation of god is to rectify the living entity's tendency to enjoy without the lord therefore the particular punishment given for a sinful activity is specifically designed to curtail that mentality that produced that activity although devotee has surrendered to the lord's devotional service until he is completely perfect in krishna consciousness he may maintain a slight inclination to enjoy the false happiness of this world the lord therefore creates a particular situation to eradicate this remaining enjoying spirit this unhappiness suffered by a sincere devotee is not technically a karmic reaction it is rather the lord's special mercy for inducing his devotee to completely let go of the material world and return home back to godhead so in light of that understanding i want to delve into this chapter of the krishna book now you know as priti vilasini maharaj was explaining that each one of you each i mean every class that i listened to this month was some little tidbit that it was almost like bread crumbs you know the story of hansel and gretel where they go to the gingerbread house following those bread crumbs right or but so you know but, so i was thinking about these bread crumbs that you guys dropped for me every little bit that i could find it like sent me on a further journey into discovery of this chapter so let's delve into the story before i get too far ahead of myself if i speak too fast if i speak too too low please do stop me i don't mind i have a tendency of running really fast when i get excited and talking really fast also and i know it might be my accent might be a little difficult to understand so please please do stop me so 
starting with this chapter. So in this chapter, Krishna actually comes to visit Pubja or Trivakra and Akrura. Now, before, um, just a little bit into what happened before, you know, Krishna has killed Kam, is on the way to kill Kamsa. He's entering Mathura. And so he, um, as he's entering Mathura, he meets different people. I think Mother Mataji is going to describe that. So one of the people, persons he meets is um, Kubja or Trivakra. Now she is a hunchback and she is called Trivakra because she is bent in three places. She happens to be um, a perfume maker, sandalwood paste maker. And so she's taking the sandalwood paste to, um, to, to Kamsa. Um, and he's, it seems that he really, really enjoys her things. And so she tells Krishna that I'm on the way to, um, to give Kamsa the sandalwood paste. But she says to him, she says, she says, but I think that you are more appropriate you are the perfect person to whom I must give this sandalwood paste. So it says in the Krishna book, she began to smear all the pulp of sandalwood over the bodies, over their bodies, it's Krishna Bhagavan, with great satisfaction and devotion. Krishna was very pleased by this service and he began to consider how to reward her. Krishna was attracted by her service. Number one point, how to reward her. When Mataji said, what did she say? Krishna wakes up in the morning and said, which devotee can I please today? Remember she said that? Oh my God. And I was like, this click, click, number one point. There'll be so many connections and I'll try to remember all of them, but this is one of them. Okay, so, so this is what Krishna is thinking. So she asks him to come to her home. And he says, I have some business to finish. Of course, he's going to finish killing Kamsa. And then he'll show, he says, I come. Okay. So then, so Prabhupada, so in the Krishna book, it writes, Krishna always tries to please his devotees as much as the devotees try to please Krishna. As the devotees always think of Krishna within their hearts, Krishna always thinks of his devotees within himself. When Kubja was converted into a beautiful society girl, she wanted Krishna to come to her place so that she could try to receive and worship him in her own way. Now, this is Kubja's mentality. She wants to worship her Lord the way she knows. And what does she know? Just taking care of him and giving him and, and, and um, all the all those um, the, her feelings of conjugal relationship with the Lord. Now, he certainly had no desire for sense gratification. By supplying the sandalwood pulp to Krishna, Kubja had already satisfied his senses. On the plea of her sense gratification, however, he decided to go to her home, not actually for sense gratification, but to turn her into a pure devotee. So one Prabhu was saying how Krishna is equal, reciprocal, and merciful. So he's equal. Now we will see this continuously. He's equal. How is he equal? He's not a friend to anybody. He's not an enemy to anybody. Because how is he equal? Krishna's only goal is to try and bring us to Krishna consciousness. Try to bring us back home. Another Mataji said, I think it was Vrinda Mataji said, said um, sometimes the teacher has to be a little bit harsher to some students, right? Some students need you know, some students, you could, you know, you could just look at them and they completely understand. Some students, you got to show them the stick and then they understand, you know, some, you know, so this, so some, it just depends on, on the, the devotee and what he needs. So he's, he's, um, and so that equality, so there is equality because Krishna's mood of equality is he just wants to get his home. Now, what methods need to be used we need to understand that Krishna's mercy is there, but it is a complex combination of our karma, our free will, and Krishna's mercy. Now we know Krishna's mercy is always there because Krishna's desire is to bring us home. So his mercy is always there, it's equal to everybody. And then we have our free will and our karma. So it's a very, very complex balance of all three of those. Now, when that, um, that reciprocation comes in, this is where we see the reciprocation. So Kubja's mentality was that a uh, conjugal relationship. You wanted to have a conjugal relationship with Krishna. And that 
my friends, is an is a different um, avenue that we are going to investigate. Let's leave that aside for now, but as it is. So, so it says, it is said that the moon does not withhold its shining from the courtyard of a crooked person. Similarly, Krishna's transcendental mercy is never denied to anyone who has rendered service unto him, whether through lust, anger, fear, or pure love. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is stated that if one wants to serve Krishna and at the same time wants to satisfy his own lusty desires, I get this, Krishna will handle the situation so that the devotee forgets his lusty desires and becomes fully purified and constantly engaged in the service of the Lord. Now remember, this is every single solitary person who has done any little bit of devotional service. The, this, the homeless man who came and gave the toilet paper to Srila Prabhupada was giving class, he walked in, put toilet paper in the bathroom. And Krishna and Prabhupada says he has started his devotional service. So anybody, anything that happens, this is where Krishna mercy so, so his mercy, mercy is equal. And then it's and it's um, uh, reciprocal. So we'll go on to um, continue to see. So so how did how is this reciprocal with Kupcha? Simply by having previously supplied pulp of sandalwood to the Supreme Lord. Supreme Lord Krishna, Kubja became free from all sinful reactions and eligible to enjoy with him. She then took Krishna's lotus feet and placed them on her breast, which were burning with the blazing fire of lust. By smelling the fragrance of Krishna's lotus feet, she was immediately relieved of all lusty desires. Evidence of what Chaitanya Charitamrita said before, that Krishna makes a situation such that those lusty desires are, are, are removed. And then it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that one must be freed from all material sinful reactions before one can engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Simply by supplying sandalwood pulp to Krishna, Kupja was thus rewarded. She was not trained to worship Krishna in any other way. Therefore, she wanted to satisfy him by her profession. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that the Lord can be worshipped even by one's profession if it is sincerely offered for the pleasure of the Lord. Like I said, so many jewels that we can pick up from this, how we can apply our lives to Krishna consciousness. It is sincerely, if it is sincerely offered for the pleasure of the Lord, keeping Krishna in mind continuously. And what did um, one Mataji, and I can't remember who she she was saying, do you remember how she was saying when, the fight was happening um, in Ranchor, Krishna, and Krishna was running away, and Zikaleya Vahana was trying to, trying to touch him, and he kept running and running, and no matter how many, how close he kept trying to get, Krishna just seemed farther and farther away. So, I mean, that, like I said, click again, but he says, you can't even touch him, you know, if you have not, what does it say? Um, if you have, you have to be completely free from any kind of material reaction to be able to touch him. So I was thinking about that pastime and that, you know, like I said, that jewel, see, okay, only Kunja Kubja could apply because if she had, a, she had that pure desire to just give the Lord out of her devotion, what she had, which was now we put. It also says one aspect is that according to um, Vishnu Chakra Thakur, actually, it says expert opinion, Kubja represents the Bhu Sekti potency of Krishna, just as Srimati Radharani represents his Chit Sekti potency. Okay, so then after Krishna stays there, stays there for a couple hours, and she asked, Kubja asked him to stay, he said, I cannot, I have, I have to go. So he leaves. But she has been satisfied. He has reciprocated to her in the in her relationship she wanted. He has purified her. He has given his mercy and see where she's equal. So equal. Now remember, she is. Okay, I won't. I'll, I'll keep that at the end. So next part. So then, who else does he remember, visit? Then he visits Akura. Now Akura was in a relationship with Krishna as his servitor. And Krishna wanted to get some service from him. Then place, so first of all, what is, 
Akrura. Now he's older than Krishna now. He's in the stan, he's in the stanum of uh, the uncle. He's in the position of an uncle. So he um when when uh, uh, um, a Krishna comes, so Akrura offers obeisances to him. He oh, he he uh, uh, um, worships him. He says he offers um, Akrura wash their feet, sprinkle the water on his head. Then he offered nice clothing, flowers, and sandal of pup, a regular worship. And then all three of them were very satisfied by Akrura's behavior. Akrura then bowed down before Krishna, putting his head on the ground. Then placing Krishna's lotus feet on his lap, Akrura gently began to massage them. Now, Akrura wants this relationship with Krishna as his servitor. So, and then, and then um, Akrura begins to start offering prayers to, to, to uh, Sri Krishna. You have delivered the whole family of the Yadu dynasty from the greatest calamity. The Yadus will always remember your saving of their great dynasty. You have inconceivable, as he said, you have inconceivable energy and you're all pervasive. He then talks about that how um, all of the material elements, all the sektis are different aspects of the Supreme Lord. We have the marginal sekti, sekti which is the uh, spiritual, which is the um, part and parcel living entities, spiritual living entities, jivatmas. And then we have the um, external energy, which is create, it's a material nature and the gunas and the gross elements, you know, earth, water, fire, etc. And then we have his spiritual energy. And he says that all these are your energies. So he glorifies the Lord about all these energies. He glorifies the Lord and says, in the material world, you create, maintain, and dissolve the whole manifestation by the interactions of the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Then he talks about how you are the Parabrahman or the Supreme Brahman. And then he talks about less intelligent men misunderstand you transcendental form to be made of material energy. But that concept is not at all applicable in you. Actually, you're all spiritual and there's no difference between you and your body. And there's two reasons why he says that, why he does that. Let's see why I wrote this down. What are the two reasons? He says, he does that because he wants, okay, you're, you desire to be seen that way. So how come it appears that he has a material body? And the two reasons that are given is that because your desire to be seen that way and two, our lack of discrimination. Okay, so those are the two reasons why he may appear to be material, but that's because of his choice. And then he says that you, you incarnate to reestablish the ancient past of the Vedas. And ultimately, of course, he came to reestablish those principles of um, the Vedic knowledge and to also um, protect the devotees and annihilate the demons. So these, the, so these are the prayers, part of the prayers. There could be an entire class on just the prayers of Akruta. So I'm... I gave a little synopsis of, of those. And then so continuing this chapter, what happens is Sri Krishna then offers his respects to Akrura. And we see, do you see this fine balance of Krishna? You know, the, the devotee wants to serve the Lord in the mood of a servant. That's what Akrura is, right? So reciprocal. And he, of course, he's equal. Then his mercy, now he shows his mercy. We'll see his mercy in Akura's life as we go forward. So remember that mercy of for Akura. And, um, and, and, and then, um, the, the, but then the Lord, um, the Lord in, as Mataji explained yesterday, how he was um, worshiped, how he was, um, um, Jyoti Mataji was explaining how he was performing all those prescribed duties that are considered appropriate for Grahastha. So what is now Krishna doing is now he says that you are um, my uncle. You are, in the, you are in the role of my uncle. And um, I am under your protection. And, um, this is a, and this is what I desire. And then he says, and he praises Akrura. 
A devotee like you, Akrura, is always ready to offer people the greatest benediction. A saintly person or devotee is free to offer benedictions to everyone. Whereas the demigods can offer benedictions only after being worshipped, one can take advantage of a place of pilgrimage only after going there. And worshipping a particular demigod involves waiting a long time for the fulfillment of one's desires. But a saintly person like you, my dear Akrura, can immediately fulfill all the desires of a devotee. Now listen how he's praising Akrura. He's saying he's the one that you can... Um, um, my dear Akura, you are always our friend and well-wisher. You are always ready to act for our welfare, speaking of Krishna Bala. Kindly, therefore, go to Hastinapura and see what arrangement have been made for the Pandava. So this is how Krishna, honoring Akura and, and, and being merciful unto him, reciprocating him in the relationship he wanted, uh, um, uh, praises Akura and sends him off to for another service that he has. So this ends this chapter. But as I said, gems keep popping, popping up. So as I'm listening, you know, I'm listening to all these Krishna Kadana and, and we're always been talking about, about these different um, demons that have come and how these different demons. So this is the other aspect. We've, we've, we've looked at one level one layer of, of the, you know, or one petal, however you want to see it, of the Krishna book of this chapter. I want to take you into a different level, maybe a different aspect. So we've been talking about the demons. We've been talking about all these demons and, and you know, everybody's been explaining, I think who explained how Hiranyaksha's son, uh, Shakatashura, was Hiranyaksha's son in his previous birth, and he had he had caused maybe Lomahas, Lomaharshana, some, some I can't remember which 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 Rishi, but some Rishi he had caused him problems, and so then he was cursed to have a ghostly body, and then he please play, you know he begged for forgiveness, please please forgive me, I you know didn't mean to do this, and then and then, and he says, the the, the sage says. Um, I will, you know, when Krishna comes, you will be, you will be um, uh, freed from this, from your curse, and you will enter into him. Yeah, she says you'll enter into him. So, um, so this, 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 so I kind of think, you know, I was like, you know, that's interesting. And then we heard about Putana, how she's Bali Maharaj's daughter. And, um, you know, and so these different things, you know, and I kept thinking, oh, that's really interesting. And then suddenly, and again, I say this is Krishna's magic because I'm always on Bhakti Sangha group. But, um, uh, but one day I was listening to Bhakti Sundar Maharaj's class because he happened to be in San Diego giving Bhagavatam class, which happens at the last time, at the same time. I had just switched off our class, I think. And then Bhakti Sundar Maharaj was speaking and all of a sudden I hear him said, and you know, Kubja was Surparaka, right? And I'm like, what? And I'm like, immediately... I was like, okay, wait, I have to study. And then another Mataji was explaining how, how um, in the, oh, Krishna, Krishna, what is this? Um, oh, I'm forgetting. The Garga Samhita, Garga Purana, how, how not, um, uh, the king of Matila, Mithila, was uh, asking questions about the pastimes of Krishna and Narada Muni was explaining those pastimes. And so this is what the Garga Samhita is about. It's actually Narada Muni talking to, uh, please remember, remind me, uh, Ruhasrava, I think it is. Uh, Bahulashva. Ah, thank you, Bahulashva. Thank you, Mataji. So Narada Muni is talking to Bahalashva, king of Mithila, and he's at, he is narrating the past, narrate, excuse me, narrating the pastimes of Krishna. And as he's narrating those pastimes, then this king keeps asking, um, well, how did how did you know how did Putana get this boon? How did this demon have this? How did this demon have this? So then he asks, how did Kubja, how did Kubja get this, this um this boon. And so it's, so Narada Muni explains 
that Kubja, that actually Surpanaka, well, um, okay, and one other thing, that, and, and as you, as we look at these demons that have come in Krishna's pastimes, some are, we understand, I think Lalitanki Mataji was explaining how, how many different, the, how many different types of gopis how there are and what they are. Like some are the, the sages of Nandakaranya that came during Rama, during the um, Rama's Avataram. Some are different kind of gopis. Some are um, uh, pure devotees already, you know, and, and some people are, some are just getting trained. So we have all these things. So all these demons are at some different, you know, they have some, either they are uh, demons that have been cursed, they might be demigods that have been cursed, they might be upsetters that may have been cursed, you know, whatever it may be. But interestingly enough, they were cursed, yes. And then they, suffered yes but as we see they keep continuing this progress towards krishna and i want to take so they take up uh, these two characters these two personalities i don't want to say characters because they're personalities not just you know characters in a story they're personalities akrura and, and uh, kubja now kubja so it's so he so uh, when he explains to um to the king that um Surpanika actually, after she um, was um, disfigured by Lakshmana, she still had this conjugal desire to have Rama as her husband. So she goes to uh, Pushkar and she meditates. She, uh, she performs severe austerities for 10,000 years. Lord Shiva appears to her and she says, I want to have Rama as my husband. And um, Lord Shiva explains that this can happen, but in Dvapar Yuga, Krishna Mahabhagavan will come, and then you this this desire of yours shall be satisfied. So here we see how that reciprocal relationship, how her progress from Swarupanaka has come to the point where she's Gupta, where she's come to the point where Krishna has not has not only transformed her physically, but he's also transformed her spiritually. She has now become a pure devotee. Now, um, some thought I had and I just lost it. Okay. Um, so that's that progress. Okay. Now, so then I started delving even more. Well, who is Akrura? Is Akrura somebody? How, you know, what is that? So we see this aspect of Kupja. She's come to split. Now, for me, I'll tell you this is what I wanted to say. For me, what I'll tell you is I was a little uncomfortable, upset, sad, I don't know what you would say, about that whole episode of Surapanika getting her nose mm -hmm. cut, off, cut off because I thought it was harsh. It really hurt me. You know, it kind of really hurt me that that he did that. And I was thinking, and remember in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, there's that, um, the devotee, that that Bhakta who was, um, was saddened that, um, how could Ravana take away Sita? You know, how does that make sense? And he was so, so pained by that. And Chaitanya, and Chaitanya Mahabhu explains how that it was not the real Sita. And he explained that whole thing and how he was much pacified. So when I read this, this, you know, pastime, I thought, you know, things happen. Difficult things happen. Horrible things happen. And we just have to understand that, you know, that some of it, I'm saying all, remember again, it is a complex combination of our free will, our karma and Krishna's mercy. Now we have to go through bad things. And I, as a grandparent, you know, as I've been in all my years, gone through a lot of stuff, a lot of heart hurting, heartbreaking stuff, a lot of difficult stuff, but I realized that I saw Krishna's mercy a little bit in there, but very difficult, very difficult. I could not come to this point of holding on with firm faith. But then when I read this verse and I saw these pastimes, I started connecting. I may not understand what difficulties I may be going through or somebody else may go through. I may not understand how severe they may be. And that's painful, but I need to understand and I need to remember and I need to have faith that Krishna has got me. Once we have, once we have performed one little bit of devotional service, you're caught. 
no matter how far you run, I'm sorry, man, you can't get out. He's caught you. He's never going to let you go. Now you're going to have to, we, we are going to have, or I'm going to have to suffer maybe some kind of month. How many lifetimes, I don't know, but I'm hoping my free will, my free will, my intelligence is being used. When we talk about free will, we're not just talking about will. We're talking about using our intelligence to make the right decision. So one caveat I want to put on you. Now, when I say we go through difficult things and you know harsh things, this does not mean that if we are in a dangerous situation, in an abusive situation, in a health crisis, it does not mean that we do not use our intelligence to make the right decisions. We do not use that, and it's called spiritual bypassing, when we say, oh, this is my karma, I have to just suffer this, so I have to stay in A, B, or C, go through this, this illness without taking any precautions, or I need to stay in this abusive relationship without trying to. This is called ignorance. This is not using our intelligence along with our free will. So I want to put that there. So as I said, again, I reiterate, combination of our free will tied to our intelligence, um, Krishna's mercy and our karma. Okay. So then going on to, okay, see if I keep on time. Then going on to Akura. So now we go on to Akura. So we gone to Akura's thing. Now I was wondering, who is Akura there? Who is Akura in this? Thing? So again, I went searching, I looked in the door, so I started reading it and reading it. And Preeti Vilasni was my sounding board. <laughs> Thank you, Preeti Vilasni. Um, because I have so many, it's like, I'm telling you, if you go into a, um, you know, if you see those, those, those um, um, movies, like, right, when somebody finds a, a big treasure, right? And he's delving in the treasure and he picks up a diamond. He's like, oh, wow. And then he looks over and he's like, he like and he gets, goes in, keeps going in more and more. And he is so overwhelmed by all this treasure that he's sitting here going, you know, uh, you know, it was, it was like that. Every time I get done, I kept, I kept telling him, I need to talk to somebody because otherwise I'm just going to come out in total confusion when I'm trying to explain my thoughts. So thank you, Preeti Vilasani, for being my sounding board. Okay, so let's go on to Akrura. So then I said, well, who is Akrura? So then I look into this, uh, this uh, Garaka Samhita, and it says in that, that Akrura is, um, that um, Daksha would come down as Akrura. And then I'm thinking, now remember, now Akrura, in the in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, you know, he, in the, for the nine process of devotional service, it gives the different personalities that represent each of the different um, different uh, uh, limbs of bhakti, right? And so Akrura is the one for vandana for offering prayers. So we see him offering these prayers. So we see he's offering these wonderful prayers. So then now, if we think back, you think about the Shrimad Bhagavatam, we remember that Daksha also. Um, a, 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 what is it offered beautiful prayers called the hum, Hamsagohya prayers, right? Now remember Daksha. So now watch it. Now watch Daksha's path, Daksha's progression. We know Daksha. He is the son of uh, uh, Brahma. He's given up responsibility to populate the earth. And um, um, the first thing he does, well, one of the things he does, commits an offense against the devotee. He uh, blasphemes Lord Shiva suffers the consequences, gets his head cut off, and again, takes birth again. And then now he's offering the Hamsa Gohya prayers to the Lord. So he's made a little bit of progress. He's now worshiping the Lord. But then he commits another offense by, 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 um, by cursing Narada, cursing a pure devotee. Again, you know, curse for a, a curse, but you know, for Narada, that was what he wanted, what, what was beneficial for us. Him. So now he travels all over the place, not the money. So now he comes down as a queer. Again, now we see him um, offering prayers in that same mood, that same mood. Now Krishna keeps bringing him closer and closer and closer. So then my question was, okay, now Kubja, it kind of came to, uh, it says he's come to, she's come to pure devotional service. So she has, um, um, come to the point of pure devotional service. It also says that she is, um, and let me see, where, how do I, where is this? I wanted to say this important point. 
Um, oh, okay, say, say, say. That, okay, she was, a, so, so uh, the Acharya state that the story of Tribhakra is on two levels. One, she is a liberated soul directly associating with the Lord in his past times. And it's also an explanation of what not to do in relation with Krishna. That we cannot be in a conjugal, we cannot, that sahajiya idea of being a conjugal relationship with Krishna is not something that we strive for. We are not at that, that level. We are not there. So that's, so that's, this is an example of what not to do. Understanding what Kubja's position is, because she is also considered the poor sekti of the Lord, right? That's also explained. So that's why that, that is it. Okay, so that was an important point. So then Akrura, um, and then so I was wondering, so what, so I felt that Akrura that Kubja had come to completion. Okay. So then I thought, well, um, well, what about Akrura? What happened to him? Was that the end? Was that, you know? And so we see, we go on into considering the Krishna book, we find out that Akrura actually becomes, um, uh, in, 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 what is it, uh, party to, or uh, what is the word I'm thinking? Conspirator, conspiracy. Yes, conspiracy. He he's becomes a conspirator in the killing of Satrajit and stealing the Shamantaka money. Now, um, and I'm sitting here thinking, what? Like, wait a minute. He's offering prayers. Now he's doing the Shamantaka money. What is this? What is this whole idea? So it's explained that, you know, one thing is that. Um, that the first one thing is that it's, they felt that Krishna says in the Krishna book that they felt that Krishna should um, be the one that ex actually has that Yamantika money. So they were really a little bit upset that he did not give the Yamantika money to that to Krishna. That's the one aspect of that. But also it is said that Vishnu the, the Acharya has explained that. Because Akrura took away Krishna um, from the gopis, the gopis cursed him. And because of that curse, he was implicated, that was the word, he was implicated in that whole conspiracy of killing of, of, such, of the killing of such to steal that. Now, interestingly enough, Krishna, when, um, when the, uh, I won't go to that whole pastime, somebody else can share that, but no, ultimately the, the, uh, it ends up with Akrura, the, uh, the, the Chamatic money ends up with Akrura, he's holding on to it, Krishna calls him and tells him to come and asks him to show his family members this Chamatic money so that Akrura knows that, that, so that everybody knows that Krishna didn't steal, he's not the one that has it, Akrura has it, and then what does Krishna do? He says to Akrura, you keep it. You hold on to it. Okay. You hold on to it for now. And then when the rightful person comes, Achyabama's son, you know, the, the, the heir to Satrajit's um, kingdom and wealth, you can pass it on to them. So I just thought that was interesting because how it explains here, you know, how he said before that he says, um, that although a devotee has surrendered to the Lord's devotional service, until he is completely perfect in Krishna consciousness, he may maintain a slight inclination to enjoy the false happiness of this world. The Lord therefore creates a, situa creates a particular situation to eradicate this remaining enjoying spirit. So this is how I saw this. This is his eradication. Now, does it end there? Again, I go back. So again, I'm searching for Akrura, and I find that in the so many notes I have all over the place. I mean, I tell you, my my, I have Krishna pictures all over the place because I'm so scattered, right? Okay, <laughs> okay. Now. In the Gauda Ganodesh Deepika, it is said that Gopinath Simha, the 39, the thirty eighth branch of the Lord Chaitanya's tree, is an incarnation of Akrura. And I thought, wow. From Daksha, all the way down to, to Akrura, all the way down to Gopinath, Gopinath Simha. I was like, what, you know, what is this? And now remember, so 
God, there's so much to say. So now, so he, so he's come as the 39th branch in Chaitanya's thing. So we understand Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is the most munificent incarnation. He is the most audarya, right? Um, and what has he done? He, and he, you know, there can only be, you know, good from here on, right? And so I was thinking, you know, even Akrura has come to this point. Even Daksha has come to this point. Now, now think about our situation. Think about our situation. My Guru Maharaj says that we are now participating in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and then I remembered how Prabhupada had said that His Holiness Jayapataka Swami was there during the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I'm thinking, we, this is Krishna's mercy. This is Krishna's equality. Because now think, all of the people, I'm not talking just about devotees who have taken up this process of Krishna consciousness. I'm talking about any single person who has seen Prabhupada, who has seen the devotee, who has picked up a book, who has tasted prasadam, who has said Hare Krishna, he is connected. He is connected and that is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given because he has given that to the entire world. Now remember, if Prabhupada had not come, this would have stayed in India. I mean, I wasn't even in India, right? So if Srila Prabhupada had not come, I wouldn't be here. All the other people that we can think of, they would not be here. And so we have come to this point where Krishna is holding us, Lord Chaitanya is holding us in the palm of his hand. He is protecting us. This is where, this is how I found the faith. This is how I found the strength to understand this verse. So I want to read this verse one more time because I want it to stick within your heart. My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past his deeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, words, and body is surely eligible liberation for it has become his rightful claim. So hold on to that thought. Hold on to that thought. Keep that from the core of your heart because this is how Krishna is protecting us. This is his equality. This is his mercy. And this is how he's reciprocal to each and every one of us. And then another layer on top of that. So I, you know, um, as I said, Things are tough, life is tough, we have to suffer, whatever, but Krishna is there. Now, one other level, one other aspect that I want to go into very, very quickly is that let's say you don't believe in these stories. I don't believe in these stories. These are all, you know, mystical, whatever, mythology. So Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, now Bhakti Vino, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu was giving class and explains how Bhakti Vinod Thakur he had, when he started um, explaining the um, pastimes of Krishna, he actually brought in the point that they were representing different anarthas within our heart. Now, for somebody who is not a devotee, I don't believe in all this. So he was saying, you're right, you don't have to believe in all this. But, you know, these actually represents these um, uh, impurities or these... Uh, how do you call these, these blemishes within our heart that we need to eradicate. So anybody of any religion doesn't even have to believe in Krishna. If they can understand that these represent these, these um, 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 anarthas, give me a word, English word, guys, I'm blanking, anarthas, these uh, faults, um, not thinking of the right word. What am I thinking of, guys? Anarthas. Um, Come on, you guys, give me a word. <laughs> so 
somebody, you know, these bad, these bad qualities, I guess, the bad Impurity qualities in our heart. Huh? Uh, Some impediments. 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 Impurity. Yeah, impairments and impurities, right? All these things. Okay, you guys, you know that you, I'm, I'm, you guys are my lifeline. So if you guys don't, I, I'm, I'll get lost. Okay, <laughs> um, unwanted. Yeah, these unwanted qualities, these impurities. But like, so even if they're not devotees, right? Even if you're talking to a, 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 a you know what I call it, just a run of the mill person, how many of them have read Aesop's fables? How many of them read you know these fairy tales? Fine, take it as a fairy tale. You know, that's Krishna's mercy. That's how he's equal. That's how he's reciprocated. They want to see him as a as a as a as a as a fairy tale. Fine. Doesn't matter how you take it. You get Krishna. He's got you. So he they read it, and then you tell them these are stories that can be told to children about cleansing these values. How you know Sekadasara was 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 puffed up with with something. Um, Kaliya was angry, his anger. So, um, so you teach these kids these stories just as fables, if you like, but remind them that you have to remove these unwanted qualities. And what Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur explains that from that level, it's just something, but they actually retranscend it because we understand. Krishna's lila, guna, rupa, nama, right? It's just as powerful. Doesn't matter how you take the medicine. It may not work as effectively if you take it the right way, but it will work. So this was like a whole different level. And I was saying again, Krishna's mercy. He's equal to everyone. He's merciful to everyone. Now he's, he's, he's pulling those people too, right? They may be clawing, holding on to Maya, holding on to whatever. Well, the Krishna still pulling him inch by inch. He's got him. He won't let him go. So again, this was my, you know, understanding. My, I just was just, I can't even explain how, how um, overwhelmed with the love that I felt from Srila Prabhupada by reading these chapters, by understanding this. Now, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. I'm trying to remember what it was. Krishna, what was the other thing? Krishna, you need to help me. Oh, okay. So, so one verse I wanted to quote back is so whatever way we approach Krishna, this is Akamo Sarva Kamo Va Moksha Kama Udaradi Thivrena Bhakti Thivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purusham Param. A person of broader intelligence. Whether he will be full of material material desires, without material desires, or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the supreme whole, the personality of Godhead. Okay, so whatever state we may be in, okay, just worship the Lord. He will eradicate those things, right? And talked about Guru, talked about that, talked about Krishna. And um, so those were the different levels that I was talking about. And as I said, and I, I, I think I forgot something and I can't remember what it is. Um, okay, right, right, right. Okay, this was the other thing I want to say. So what are the different, what is something else that we can take away from this chapter about Krishna pleasing his devotees? Just a couple of things. One, that we have to understand that Krishna is drawing, trying to, is, is drawing us closer to him. Okay, step by step, hook or by crook, he's going to get us there. Okay, he arranges things in such a way that we come closer to him. Second thing is, we cannot judge anybody. Now, kubja, disfigured, considered, you know, uh, courtesan. Of course, it's explained in the um, um, in the Krishna book and in the in the, in the Bhagavatam that kubja was actually pure. And uh, no, and so, um, um, but but we can, and so she was just pure. She's not. She had. She was a virgin, actually. So that's what he said. It's completely explained there. But uh, even otherwise, we are in no position to be able to judge anybody. We cannot say he is advanced in Krishna consciousness and he is not. Kubja, where is her position? And Akrura, what is his position? Akrura was relative of Krishna. Kubja was a servant girl. 
you know, and so, so we as devotees, we have no right and we have no qualification to judge anybody and, under, and try to figure out, it's not our place where he is. That's none of our business. That's between Krishna and him. Our only position always is to be number one, a friend, number one, a listener. What is it that they say, you know? Um, to share and receive confidences, most important thing amongst devotees, most, most important things. If it is not your story, it's not yours to share. So this is one thing. So this is one thing. Okay. So we cannot judge anybody. We have to be the friend. We have to be the confidant. And first and foremost, we have to be a perfect disciple of our spiritual masters. We have to understand that we are representing um, Guru, we are representing Shila Prabhupada, and we are representing Krishna. And anytime we're put in the situation, as the Christians say, what would Jesus do? What we should ask is, if Srila Prabhupada or my Guru Maharaj walked in on me right this minute, whatever I'm doing, would he approve or not? No. Second, third thing is that the curses, it seems, so what we may see as, as a hardship or something that we're going through is, um, you know, we, we don't know how it works. But like I said, again, complex combination, you know, free will, mercy, and karma. Again, using our intelligence along with our free will. Okay. And then also, we can't really even curse or, you know, condemn the person who is doing, again, I got to keep saying this, but sometimes somebody will be the bearer of bad news. And we cannot, you know, they're put in that position because of some reason. Could be karma, could be Krishna's mercy, could be whatever. So we have to keep that in mind. And, and that way we can have a little bit of, uh, what I say, more equal mindedness toward everybody that we meet. That even if somebody has done us wrong, we can somehow take a step back. Always, number one, um, Kriti Velasani said something. They said, I, you know, take care of four generations. Yes. And I will give you the number one rule in, in relationships with anybody. The number one rule is silence. The number one rule is always silence. Whether you're being chastised, whether you're being praised, whether you're being instructed, whatever it is, the first thing, the first lesson is silent and listening, right? Right? Sravanam is the first process. Sravanam is most important. And, 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 intelligence, using your intelligence and remembering all these different things of how we are an instrument for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then taking the full action. So those were the things that I want to talk, those three important points. Let me go through, make sure I've got everything that I said. Um, Krishna, I'm not just as one cannot approach the sun without become, being fire, one cannot approach the supreme pure Lord Krishna without undergoing a rigid purificatory process, which may appear like suffering, but which, in, which is in fact a curative treatment administered by the personal hand of the Lord. He's got us in his hands. He's always going to hold us in his arms. So this is what I wanted to share. And one last verse. And I want to share this verse because it is my favorite verse. Srinvata Svakata Krishnaha Punya Sravana Kirtana Rudyantasta Badrani Vidhunoti Yabadrani Vidhunoti Sutsatam. Sri Krishna, who is the Paramatma in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. So this is the ultimate mercy, along with the Mahamantra, that Jaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us, that Srila Prabhupada has given us, that Krishna has given us. 
This is something we should hold closely in the heart, in our heart. And every time we feel that pinch, every time we feel that pain of something, remember this verse. Remember Kupcha. Remember Akrura. Remember Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I, you know, at this point, I really would like to offer my most humble obeisances to my spiritual master. If there's anything that I've spoken, as Prabhu always said, Yad atrasa skalitat skalitam kinchet vidvam sapuriantutat. Yad atrasa ushvatam kinchet tat guru revamen eva menahi. If there were any errors in my presentation, then may the learned souls correct me. However, if there was anything nice in it, then it belongs to my guru and not to me. And to each one of you, each one of, I said before, what, you know, the 31 ways of Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors. This is Krishna Kata 31 plus, okay? <laughs> Forget, you know, you know, whatever else. This is Krishna Kata, Krishna Kata Amrita 31 plus. This is what this is. Because we have got the jewels and each one of you, I've, like I said, I have notes all over the place and each one of you have given me something that I picked up and said, I want that. I'm going to follow that. I'm going to follow this, this. And this is what has brought me to. And all I can say is I am so excited because I am going to continue reading Krishna book every single solitary day just so I can find more jewels. And I wish all of you the same happy treasure hunting. Hare Krishna. Panchakalpatarupisya Kripasindhivyamcha Patitana Pavane Pyo Vaishnavya Pyo All glorious assemblies. Thank you very much. Please, if there's any corrections, any, please, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Paneshwari Mataji. Surely treasure unearthed. Yeah, treasure unearthed. <laughs> It was so wonderful. It was so wonderful. I was waiting for the realization section. And uh, yeah, it was so beautiful. I really liked a few points, uh, like how karma, mercy and free will, all these three act together. It's a combination because it's very hard to figure out why exactly certain things happen. But then definitely karma, free will and mercy of Krishna. And um, uh, another point I really like is how you were mentioning that everyone is ultimately connected to Mahaprabhu. Even if they have just eaten prasadam once or said a Hare Krishna once, it doesn't matter. Everyone gets connected to Mahaprabhu. I mean, that is so much mercy, so much mercy. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's so beautiful. And it's true. It's true. It's just a matter of time. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe in a few years. And I see it works, actually. It does work. Yeah, Mahaprabhu. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are so fortunate, right? We are so fortunate to be here at this point in time. So definitely, yes. Mataji, what you said um, makes so much sense. And how Krishna always takes care. Uh, it doesn't matter what you go through. Uh, and how he takes care, we don't know, but he takes care. You can just feel that he takes care because it might not be the way you want him to take care of you. Right. And he just takes care. And you feel that um, that embrace, that invisible embrace, definitely, definitely, that's true. And um, uh, the final lessons, uh, you really can't judge anyone. <laughs> yes, that is so true. Something to be practiced all the time. And the importance of maintaining a relationship. I like that two-point formula, silence and patient listening. Patient listening goes a long way. And yes, silence, not reacting. Um, yes. I think that is the formula. So beautiful, so beautiful, so beautiful. You're glowing like the sun with that orange thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Krishna does. That's what Krishna Katha does. That's just when you're talking about him. I just can't sm stop smiling when I talk. When It's just unbelievable. Yeah, and so much immersion you've had um, in this for the past more than a month, maybe. But really, you have uncovered so many details of this past time by touching upon their previous births which kind of helps us put things in perspective and I understand how you get these wonderful realizations and how it can be applied to our daily life as well. So thank you. <laughs> I wish you didn't stop, but <laughs> thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna Paneshwari Mataji. What a wonderful, fantastic, fabulous, awesome, amazing. Okay, class. okay, Kiri, that's so that you gotta turn your camera on. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I don't care what you look like. <laughs> Just turn your camera on. <laughs> okay, why do you want to see my face? I do want to see you. I I you know you guys the seeing it doesn't matter, seeing a devotee is seeing a devotee. Okay, I, I'm not in a condition because I'm not properly combed myself, but just for you, I'll show you a little bit. I don't bit. care. I don't care. I don't know. How do I see you? I don't know. Okay. Can you see me now? Uh, I don't know. Is, yes. Does it come up first? Like it. Yes. Don't. yes. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's Thank wonderful. you. I now now come on here. I haven't combed my hair and I don't know. Okay, I'm just getting so many messages. Okay, so anyways, thank you, thank you so much for such a beautiful, wonderful, awesome, amazing class. And I really like, you know, as Preeti Vilasni already, you know, she condensed, she condensed the whole class. <laughs> but the best part is the best words that you shared from Brahma's prayers, you know, it's, it's so much to say on those prayers. And if we imbibe that one single prayer in our life, I think so our Krishna consciousness will be 100% you know, it will be fulfilled. <laughs> we'll be conscious of Krishna 100%. Yes. Just one prayer of Srimad Bhagavatam, the entire Bhagavatam. So, but it's so hard. And as you have already said, that there are so many complexities of our free will, our karma, but then Krishna's mercy is pouring incessantly at every moment, yes. whether we realize, whether we don't realize. But yes, it's been pouring. And it will take us one day. We should have that faith and then conviction, which I can see you right on your face. Yeah. And it's because of you, even I could feel that, yes, Krishna is here only. It's here. I can touch, you know. Yeah. So thank you, Mataji. Thank you for transforming your faith and conviction from your heart to our heart. And it, it's so purifying. It's so purifying. So and one more thing which I really like is that how you uh, took, you know, you know, how you uh, took the jewels from each and every class and then you just shared with all of us. And that shows that how sincerity and dedication you were listening to those classes. And that shows your love towards Krishna. So all glories to you, Mataji. It was practical class. It was wonderful. It was awesome. And it was very, very practical for a person like me who can just speak and go on and on, but have nothing to imbibe in my own. But today is the day where I can imbibe. So thank you, Mataji, for your awesome class. All glories to you and all glories to your Gurudev for making yes. and keeping this such a wonderful disciple. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Paneshwari. Hare Krishna. Thank you, thank you. Thank you somebody. Hare Krishna, Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Mataji, I don't have words. <laughs> I was, I was, like, are you going to not put your camera on so I can see you guys? I'm a very, I'm a very personal person, guys. I just got to... I, I, I put no. my camera on. Okay, good, good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, talk to me now. <laughs> I... I'm still stumbling for words. You like <laughs> so nice. You collected honey from every possible flower and you put it in a nice honeycomb and you were building it and building it and building it. It was super ecstatic. Super ecstatic. So nice. Tough concepts. But you gave it in such a palatable form. Like, you know, when sometimes I see an art drawing and then they, they make a rose. It, it's just like they're drawing some things, but then slowly the flower comes and then it's beautifully decorated. It was like that, such a cherishable class. And now I know why Guru Maharaj specially calls out for you. When you are there, he doesn't miss uh, to talk to you. You are so empowered and you are simply amazing. And you are Prabhupada's and Guru Maharaj's gift for us. Thank you so much. Please accept my humble life. Thank you. You have too much praise, but it goes to Guru Maharaj definitely. Definitely goes to Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, much. it's because of you guys that I did this stuff. So you, you have to understand one thing. I wouldn't have come to this point if it wasn't for you. Okay. How many years have I been in Krishna consciousness? And how, ask me how many times I've read Krishna book. 
okay? So just remember, you may see, you may seem to think that I'm something this, that. no, remember that it's only because of you that I have come to this point. Otherwise I wouldn't be here. So remember that, okay? So it's all on you. <laughs> it's like you are U-turning. You're taking a U-turn and giving it to us. Amazing, mother. I'm giving yeah, praise where that, it goes. You know, I have your association eternally. That's my wish so that I can appreciate the devotees, appre appreciate the Lord, the movement, and do service yes. together. Yes. Hari Bol. Thank you Hare so Krishna. much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Leitan. That is great. Hare Krishna, Sukhusangri Mataji. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Hi Krishna Mataji, Dhanvat Pranams. If you can put your camera, if you guys don't mind putting your camera on, if you don't mind pinning her so I can see her when I'm talking to her, that would be very nice. If it's a problem, just say, I hey, am not ready. That's fine. Um, <laughs> Mataji, I'm not sure I'm ready, so. Okay. Um, I, I remember what you, I, I, will, I will imagine your face in my in my mind when, I'm, when you're talking. Mataji, maybe. Hold on Excuse me one second. Okay. I'm okay. thinking maybe I am okay, but I don't know if you all are ready to see my face like this. You know maybe. what? A devotee is a devotee in whatever position it is. You know, we are we are Krishna's within our heart. That's all that's important. Perhaps more of this but, heaven than Kirsida herself. You know. Anyway, I will start my video. Thank you. Hi Krishna Mataji, thank you so much for the beautiful class. I I don't know if I missed the trail of um, thoughts there, and I have a couple of questions, Mataji. If you're okay yes. With. Um, yes. One was okay. uh, you said that you were kind of upset about the fact that uh, you know Shurpanakal's nose was cut off, and uh, how did you get around that? And also the other one uh, you mentioned that you know a devotee should not, uh, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, take everything as, you know, this is Krishna's doing, but he must, he or she must be practical and uh, must try to do something to amend the situation. So uh, these were the two points that, um, I mean, when and where and how should a devotee react? And uh, how did you actually get around to the fact that Shurparaka's notes was cut off. Okay, because remember, what did Shurparaka do after she got her nose cut? She went and performed austerities. And because of those austerities, she got the boon from Lord Shiva. So you see that it's only because she was disfigured and was so upset that she actually took another path, right? Otherwise, you know, if she this, this caused her to go, she was so angry that she still wanted this, this had this strong desire for Lord Ram, but she was also angry. So she had to get her nose cut off to, to kind of like, you know, control, to stop her from what she was doing. But then that actually turned her to go to do tapasya for Lord, to Lord Shiva and actually get the boon. So it made her progress on Krishna consciousness. So it's harsh, it was harsh. But, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we have to be harsh. What is it, tough love, right? Sometimes we have to show tough love to our kids. You know, we can't always be our kid's friend and our, you know, their best friend and hug and love and kiss them. Sometimes you got to lay down the law. Sometimes you have to be a little harsh. So this is what I saw as uh, Swarpanika uh, being dealt with harshly, but it actually made her go and do tapasya and then and ultimately get the Lord. That was one thing. The other thing you were talking about. Well, see, the reason why I say that, and, 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 and to that, how do we understand free will, mercy, and um, our karma is, you know, it depends upon the situation. So there's no pat answer for anything. But I, I want to, uh, there have been situations where we have, particularly maybe in our movement also, particularly, you know, everywhere, but that when people are in an abusive situation, they'll say, oh, this is my karma, Krishna put me here and I just have to suffer it. Um, well, you have to think about that. Is that what Krishna wants? You know, you know, you can use your intelligence. You have to do what you can to get out of a situation that is detrimental to your life, to your limb. So these kinds of things, okay? So that's why it just depends upon a situation. It could be a health crisis. Oh, I've got like this whole, you know, uh, I've got some disease, 
you know, I'm not going to do anything because, you know, Krishna just gave me this. No, no, Krishna did not give you this, okay? It's a complex combination of so many different things. You know, use your intelligence. If there's something out there that can help you, you need to try it. Srila Prabhupada told my Guru Maharaj, he said, my Guru Maharaj was um, working in Mayapur building the temple and he had stepped on a nail and hurt his foot. That's really bad infection. And Srila Prabhupada went to him and told him, no, you need to remember that this body is no longer yours. This body, this body belongs to me. This body belongs to Krishna. So um, you can't, um, you, know, you need to take care of it. So in that same way, any situation, it needs to be uh, dealt with uh, individually. And it needs, it needs to be dealt with with somebody who um, is knowledgeable and an authority, whether it be a medical condition, whether it be a personal condition, whatever it may be. Does that help? Yes, Mataji. So you're saying that any uh, situation we have put in could be a combination of factors. And it is a combination of factors. There's no doubt. It is a combination. Because um, our free will is always there. And Krishna's mercy is always, I mean, the, you can't get away from it, right? Our free will is always there. It's given. Krishna's mercy is always given. It's proven. And then finally, karma, we have to suffer our karma. There's karma is there. You know, we have to, but we understand. I mean, if you think about it, this is the analogy that come to my mind when I was thinking about it. When a surgeon has to do heart surgery, he has to like cut your ribs, right? He has it with a saw. He has to cut your ribs in order to get to your heart. Man, that's pretty intense, right? That's painful. We can't feel it because we're under, but that's pretty painful, so if, if a heart surgeon just to get to our physical heart has to cut open our this uh, rib cage, think of what you know what to say of somebody who has so many coverings and how much he Krishna has to you know he's still trying to do it more gently you know he's a surgeon he does it tries to do it gently with us tries to do it gently without us feeling the pain of it but it's you know you can't completely get away from the pain it's there. Otherwise, you know, another thing I think that if you don't, if you get completely away from the pain, then we won't learn. We need to suffer, you know, we, the way that we are, the way we are so attached to things. It's only as we, we, you know, feel a little bit of the pinch that we like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, I really don't want that. So, you know, there's that. I don't know if I answered your question or if I digressed. No, Mataji, that was good. Uh, only thing I was wondering was we've also uh, learned, uh, you know, or read in our scriptures that, as soon as a person starts devotional service, uh, you know, he gets rid of his past karma. So uh, is that applicable for really a pure devotee or a practice? Well, to see what it says right here, even my, uh, even my, um, um, my Guru Maharaj explained that sometimes it's because, um, uh, well, for him, he was saying because his, his, his disciples don't follow the regulation. He has to suffer those. So it could be that. It could be there's some little, uh, uh, what is it? The bijam, right? It's something <laughs> underneath that has to be eradicated. So it could be a, like I said, again, it's very complex. We don't know. That's the complexity of that that you know nut or whatever you want to call it. It's very yeah, good. Sure, Mataji. Thank you so much. That helps and uh, really a beautiful class, Mataji, and a very thought provoking and uh, deep class. I would like to say you have put in like a lot of thought into the class, not just you know. Uh, um, I just read the katha like superficially, like, you know, not like that, but uh, you've tried to bring out a lot of essence from the chapter, Masaji. Thank you so much for it. Hey. Thank you, Sikasari Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 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 All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Mataji, for such a such a beautiful, beautiful class. Mataji, I really love to see your expression when you are talking. And it's so nice that we involve in the kata. I mean, you took out from each and every of our classes. You sit and you note down and you have uh, put that point to this particular story, how nicely you have connected and uh, the differences between Kubja and Akrura. So who is what and how is Barsi is working? There is no difference between anybody. Krishna can, you know, Krishna can act to anyone, uh, anyone. He shows his mercy and we should not judge anybody. Such a beautiful, beautiful class, Vataji. I'm very, very grateful to you. And I'm, and when you asked us to start the video, I was like, before you ask, I want to start video today because you are, you are coming from last but one month before also you
used to come, but at least for this one month, I have observed for each and every class, you are coming on the video and encouraging each and everybody. So it's my turn today to be on video for you and to talk uh, what I felt for today's class. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mataji. Such a beautiful, beautiful class. When you are talking to Suksagari Mataji, I was reminding this. If, uh, if let's say, if my child has uh, thrown in, uh, what do you call, mullu name and what do you call that? Thorn? Thorn. Thorn, thorn. thorn right? Thorn is insert in his, in her leg. So it is painful, right? Uh, so if I don't, if I remove, that is also painful. But I leave it, it's going to be more painful. So first I have to do what I have to do as a mother. It is, it is painful for me to treat her like that. But I have to remove it. So in the same right. way, Krishna is also doing to us. So if we need to treat it, he had to treat us, right? Otherwise, if we don't treat me in a minute, I did a mistake. He have to correct me. If we don't do that, then I'm going to do even, it is going to be even worse, worse than later yes. my leg only means I, if it gets more infection to her, then uh, so the leg only is going to get problem, right? So yes. the same thing, uh, like when you are explaining to her, I was remembering that such a beautiful, beautiful class, Mataji. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. loved it. Hari Bol. Hari Krishna. All Krishna Krishna Maharaj. Thank you, Guruji. Super Sagri Mataji. Sagri Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji. It's so nice to hear from you. Uh, it's like uh, Haritangi Mataji said, you have taken out points from each and every class and you have mentioned it in your class it shows how good listener you are you must be taking notes and you also said that you have taken so many notes so it shows about your sincerity first time i'm hearing it from you and it's such a wonderful class you gave uh, whenever i i hear these classes every day one one mataji is giving classes definitely i want to hear about krishna kathas but uh, I also like to hear from them so that I get to observe the qualities in them they have when I hear from them. So like sometimes I get to see that someone is very nice narrator. Someone is speaking so confidently. Someone is so sincere. So definitely from your class, I can say that you're such a pure hearted devotee and so humble, so humble. I mean, you have been in Krishna consciousness for so many years, but you're so humble. I really look for, I mean, whenever I see these qualities, I see, I, I think that I should try to imbibe those because I have no qualities in me. So I, I really thank you for that. And um, you're so sweet and you're such a pure hearted that you even felt bad when uh, even uh, Shurpanakas knows what cut. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for your wonderful class and your association. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. All great, Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hey, Krishna. Shama Supriya Mataji. Yeah, yes. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Praneshwari Mataji. Hare Krishna. What an excellent class, Mataji. Very, very nice, Mataji. From starting to ending, I like all the points, Mataji. So, so nice. And especially, I like the point where you said that um, the pastime of Srila Prabhupada. One of the person, homeless person came inside and he gave a toilet paper and Srila Prabhupada said, that is a starting of his spiritual life. Very, very excellent, Mataji. Very, very excellent. And uh, lastly, I like the point, we should have the good hearing, smaranam. Everywhere, everyone, we have to be very conscious. We have to be silent. We have to observe what they're telling us. Those are very nice points, Mataji, and how you glorified Guru Maharaj also. Awesome, Mataji. Uh, as Lithangi Mataji said, it is like really jewel, Mataji, you are for Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada. And we are happy to have your this jewel with our Bhakti Sangha connection, Mataji. Thank you so much, Mataji. And um, one question I have, Mataji. So, how should we connect um, 
as Kupja is a Bhu Shakti and at the same time, um, she is the Surpanaka in her previous life. How to connect Mother? I'm a little bit confused in this. I, the only thing that I can say is that it's just something that the Acharyas have explained. So I, I, you know, Krishna can whatever. All I can say is I, I don't know, except that, that it says that she's a pure devotee. So maybe even that position as Surpanika is still Devi, is all I can, I can, I can think. I don't, I can't make a direct connection, but that's just the, um, how do I say, I'm, I'm um, assuming that. That she's that pusik. Since she's that pusik, is that even that position was something? But it says she's a pure devotee, and she came to to fulfill a pastime of the Lord. So even as Surpanika, she maybe had been fulfilling a pastime of the Lord position that Krishna has put her in. Okay, okay, got it, Mataji. And again, one more question, Mataji. So, uh, so we are listening to our Guru Maharaj classes, all these Krishna Katha classes. We are involving in all these classes, but at the moment we are out of the class, again, we are back to our, I'm talking especially my position, Mataji. Again, we are, I'm back to my original like materialistic person. So how to stick on to what we have heard in the classes, Mataji? What is like, uh, how to invite that qualities in our materialistic way of life also, Mataji? The way, okay. the moment I am out of the class, again, I'm just like normal, like non-devotee, how they do, I, I will be in that way. <laughs> so, so, so this is the thing is, I think we're a little bit hard on ourselves. Mm-hmm. I think you may be a little bit hard on yourself because you can't say that you have, that throughout the day, you never think about Guru Maharaj, you never think about Krishna. We can't say that at some point or other, at least when you're doing an offering, you're remembering the Lord, Right. Or mm-hmm. when you are, you see a devotee, you're thinking of the Lord. So I think sometimes we're a little bit harsh on ourselves. So instead of thinking the negative, I'm a very positive person. Instead of thinking the negative, what I haven't done, focus on what you have done in Krishna Kajal. Focus what I have done. I've chanted my rounds today. I've chanted a couple of good rounds today. I have read a story. I've listened to this class. That's one thing. So just so focus on what you have done instead of focusing on what you have not done. So that's one thing. Another thing is, if you share about Krishna, if you share about something you heard, you don't have to be continuously, we are in the material world, we have other things to do, we have jobs, we have this. We're not gonna be continually talking about Krishna all the time because we are not, not because we're not pure devotees. We may be pure devotees, but we may not be talking about Krishna all the time because we have jobs, we have families, we have responsibilities. But if you can think of him every once in a while, if you can share some little tidbit every once in a while, then that's something. And that's what you should focus on. What have I done today? You know, it's like that. It's like that. Um, the story of Narada, right? The Narada. And then, then uh, Narada comes to, Vishnu Maha, uh, to Narada and asks him, who's your greatest devotee? And he says, and he shows this, this Brahmana who's doing all these prayers and stuff. And you know, he's asked, so he said, okay, go to this Brahmana's house and go visit him. So he goes to this Brahmana's house and um, um, he sees and he thinks this is a Brahmana, a great devotee. And then he says, he goes to this, uh, this uh, cobbler's house or a farmer's house, I don't what it was. goes to him and he just gets up in the morning and he says, oh, Krishna, please, you know, everything I do today, I'm doing for you. And then he goes off on his work. This whole time he's just working. He's working, he's working hard, he's doing all the stuff. Then when it comes to lunchtime, he takes his food and he says, oh, Krishna, thank you for this prasadam. He eats his prasadam, he goes back to work, he's working, working, working. Comes back home in the night, goes to sleep and says, says, um, um, oh, Krishna, whatever I've done, um, um, uh, Right, whatever I've said with my hands and my mouth, whatever, everything that I've done, take it as an offering to you. And he goes to sleep. So then Narada says, "Okay, that's fine. I see this cobbler sounds pretty good, and, and whatever." And then uh, Krishna tells Narayana tells him, "Okay, I want you to take this, bindi, this uh, pot of water. I want you to put it on your head, and when you walk around all the, the, you know, walk around the all three planetary systems." But don't drop a piece of drop, drop water. So he's saying, okay, I'll do this. So he's going around and he's walking around. And the whole time, all he's concentrating on is this 
block of this water that you know, I'm not supposed to drop it. 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 And he gets there to Narayan and Narayan says, okay. And he starts, okay, I did it. You told me to do it. I did it. So what? And he said, okay, in that time, how many times did you think about me? And Narayan said, and then Narayan when he says, uh, actually, I kept thinking, I can't drop this water. I can't drop this water. I can't drop this water, but I didn't think about you once. So who is the better devotee, Narada or this, you know, this is this cobbler. So as I said, don't focus on the negative. Don't focus on the negative and make it a habit. You know, we do, we offer our food. So we're thinking about Krishna when you're offering your food. You know, when you get up, say your prayers in the morning, right? You know, what is this? Um, um, we say the prayer uh, when we're touching the floor. Yeah, Samudra Vasane Devi Parvata Yeah, Parvata so we say, why do we yeah. say these? We teach these to our children. Why do we say these? Why do we teach this to their children? Because we are, Krishna's name is powerful. Those, you know, you, these are, these are like, these are like little, 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 little pinpricks, little, little pinpricks that are going into that whole balloon of Maya. Little, little pinpricks. One of those days that you just keep, keep popping, okay? Focus on the positive and then think of, make it a habit to think of Krishna at least certain times of the day so that you, at least you do that. I hope that helps. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So, Thank you know, you. we have responsibilities. Don't condemn, condemn yourselves for your responsibilities. Krishna put us in there for these responsibilities, okay? I always joke around that I say I have a lot of... Um, uh, I have, you know, I do a lot of things. And I know that the reason why I do a lot of things is because I can get distracted and um, become a little lazy. Krishna knows that I can get, you know, it's the monkey mind. You know how the monkey mind, they give you something to do because otherwise the monkey gets in trouble. That's what my mind is like. If I don't get to do something for Krishna, it gets in trouble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank monkey you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. 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 Hare Krishna Mataji, Koti Koti Danpat Pranam, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev Ki Jai, Shri Shri Nata Gopi Ki Jai. First of all, the class, the essence of all the, all the Srila Prabhupada book Mataji and very practical class, we have to understand that uh, when more and more difficulties and obstacles came in our life, that time what should our mood? And we have to be silent when somebody is, uh, me Mataji, now what I will do, I, I will just turn my face, but all are inside like a volcano after one or two or three months, it's come like a volcano, like that. But it should not come out, uh, whether they are that fault or my fault. I should be very humble uh, when we are given a Krishna consciousness to non Vaishnava. <laughs> we should not thoda be under hurts nahi rakhna chahiye. Uh, and Mataji, uh, you give us such a nice example of Kubja, Akrura, and also the prayers of Akrura and the mood of Akrura. And you explained so nicely about the Kalya Vahan and, uh, and the uh, completely free from the material attachment, from the desire to give uh, a love to Kubja. And uh, you have pain when the Uska Nak cut hua tha. I forgot. Uh, then you explain Shimati Shishi Radharani's protency accrued with it is difficult to explain in two minutes, but I will try. Accrued a visit to Lord Krishna, and when Lord Krishna is massaging, please forgive me, Lord Akrura is please forgive me, Akrura is massaging Lord Krishna's feet, and uh, 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 and uh, you explain about the Krishna's lotus feet and uh, marginal sakti, external gunas, earth, uh, water, fire, spiritual energy, and mood of goodness, passion, and ignorance, and mercy of Akrura. Uh, you pray so much about the Akrura's prayers, and uh, we learn that whatsoever mood to serve Srila Prabhupada, and whatsoever mood to 
to give a krishna courses to newcomer vaishnava before 23 years or 20 27 years so when i am a newcomer in vaishnava mata ji i just hear uh, at the kishori mata ji i put it everything there and plainly i come to home uh, kishori knows that but still i just japa shri krishna sharanamma front of my kishori mata ji but she never said single words to me it's take 2 uh, 3 years 2 4 6 8 16 round but she has so much patience as i have that much patience to sau newcomer vaishnava no mata ji we have so much patience to sau newcomer vaishnava uh, they have so many questions at any time at at night 11 o'clock they ask but we have to answer it from our uh, shri prabhupad sulakdev shri shri radha gopinath marsi he explained so many thing mata ji uh, hiranyak san and then kars of kutnas and um, uh, bhakti bhakti sundar maharaj is explain you a search from garga purana king of mithila and bahulas aswa uh, a uh, bahulaswa married king of asking putna and explaining so many thing mata ji that of daksha come to the akrura opening prayers and uh, sounding words of treasure akrura in the daks come uh, come down as a akrura nauda bhakti difficult uh, difficulties came in devotee's life daksha also beautiful prayers and then uh, narada uh narada uh, from uh, from narada you give us so many lessons that uh, uh prayers of our acharyas she liberated uh, selves from sahajya uh, bhakti then uh, you explain about the difficulties uh, heart breaking uh, when the, sometimes so many difficulties came our life that time why all that difficulties came so we come we become we there is a chappan bhoga mata ji in my plate in shri radha gopinath three days four days uh, there is a krishna katha i am not able to go outside but the senior vishnu came to my home but mata ji still i am not reading be honest shri bhagavata it is joint family 17 18 vishnu but still mata ji i get 20 30 minutes at night but not reading shri bhagavatam since then but when more and more obstacles and difficulties uh, came in our life this bhakti sangha is a, like mata ji it is a i agree with you that one one devotee is a, one one spiritual bomb we are learning a lesson from each and every vaishnava and you wo kehte hai na mata ji sab sab shishi bhagavatam shishi chetane charanamrut all the puranas shishi bhagavat gita sab ka sar aaj mata ji it is hard to give in a one hour this much potency to all of us mata ji the notes is going and and going on please give me for taking more time it is just too hard that you explain about the story of kupcha akrura and shri shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and you teach us so many lesson especially very patiently we have to pass out the situation came in our life and uh, chant our round attentively hearing krishna katha krishna katha krishna katha whole day sometimes we hearing krishna katha 11:30 and it is difficult to get up by o'clock but mata ji this charge our battery mata ji spiritual battery not only us but our family member unconsciously hear krishna katha and they cool down mata ji it is impossible to change the nature of vaishnava but they so calm and cool down sitting in our shoulder so we have to very patiently give krishna conscious to first our family mata ji anant koti dhanpat pranam shila prabhupad shila gurudev ki jai shri shri radha gopinath ki jai thank you mata ji koti koti dhanpat pranam hare krishna thank you for the gopika fantastic summary of the class you take a wonderful notes and thank you all praise goes to my guru maharaj thank you very much hare krishna thank you for nishri mata ji i also what i have been question for many years i got answer right now <laughs> what was your question my question was how what have i done or how did i no. get into this krishna consciousness movement <laughs> and i couldn't find any answer but this lord chaitanya and also he says krishna is you know, working this is and you know one other thing i wanted to add is that one time 
Srila Prabhupada, my Guru Maharaj was explaining that, the Kumbamela Prabhupada was explaining that you have to perform many, many austerities, many, many penances, many, many different things in order to come to Krishna consciousness. And somebody, and one senior devotee in the audience raised his hand and said, But Prabhupada, I don't remember performing anything in my life that's and the penances or austerity or sacrifice. I, I, I was living a very sinful life. And Prabhupada says, I have made your good fortune. So that's why we got here. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada has made our good fortune. Thank you. And I remember I had never done any brothers or anything in my life. And every time I try to do, because all the girls are doing, every time I do try to do it, I never finish it. It's always <laughs> So that, that's why I was thinking, how did I get, you know? <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Very, very Thank wonderful. You. Very, Hare Krishna. Very nice. Next to in class. Thank Hare you. Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Please come here on sometime. I, one of these days I'll get to Where are you going, Baltimore? East Coast, no? Baltimore. Baltimore, right, right, Baltimore. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Please accept my humble obeisances. Vancha Kototur Bishya Kapas in Dubia Chapatitana, Bavan in the Ocean in the morning. I think we, by your permission, we can end the call now. Yes, yes. Thank you, Matthias. Oh, hi, Krishna. Matthias, can you hear me? Okay. I do. I hope you won't be so long. Okay, go ahead, Matthias. Okay. Hi, Krishna Matthias. Thank you for, thank you for the class. Yeah, I um yeah, of course it was, it was really wonderful class and I want to be here. But um I had a question, but a, a couple of questions about Shastric references. Do you remember that last CC verse that you read? My goodness, by now I've forgotten what it was. Um it was, it was a very it last it was a very last verse that you read. Uh, the song, I didn't read a CC verse. I did reference a CC verse from the, from the, from this. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Do you Let remember the gist my, of it? The gist of it. Hold on a second. Let me open up my. Yes. Um, it was like a very encouraging verse. <laughs> yes, it was a Chaitan. Let me see what it's up at the top here. Oh, was it in here? No, I think it was in this one. We look for it. It was in the it was in the Krishna book. So let me see if I find it. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says it said what it says. That whether you worship the Lord in lust, anger, or something, that Krishna will slowly bring you back to him, something to that effect. Where did I put that? Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, where it says. Simply by having I don't, me, I don't think so. that's not the one. No, it says, something about um, reading about something about reading, whether if you're reading or oh my goodness. Anyway, I think if I replay the video, okay. I'll be able to find it. Yeah, and then ask me, then just text me or put on WhatsApp or whatever and ask me the question. Okay, how about that Narada Muni story that you told us? Because, you know, I, I hear it from time to time, but I never know the where to find it. I do not know the source of it. I've also just heard it from time to time. I'm sure it's probably in some Purana or something. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Because, you know, I was trying to cite it to one Maharaj you know, and I was so surprised he didn't know what I was talking about. So ever since then, I said, I have You're to. You're trying to find a source. Story. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So these are like the stories that have just come down for us from. You yeah. Know. But the point of that story is that, you know, although the, the, the devotee, he's so focused on, I think it was Narada Muni, he's so focused on his seva. So that's really, that's really his way of remembering well, no, the point there was being that, see, even that this, 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 this uh, woodcutter or this uh, farmer, cobbler, whatever, that even though he had work to do that was not Krishna conscious, as we say, like he's not, you know, distributing books, he's not doing puja, he's not doing all this kind of stuff, 
because he has a job, because he's got to live in the material world, mm -hmm. that he still remembers the Lord at least three times a day. But many of us, Narada the Muni was given, not the Muni was the example there, that who he's a pure devotee of the Lord. But when he was giving a task that was not necessarily devotional service, right, just carrying on, he didn't think about the Lord. So the, the thing is, that, so my point in that was saying that, you know, for us, we should, we should make times where we at least think about the Lord every once in a while to make a habit of it and not, and focus on those things instead of thinking that somebody else is performing better devotional service than me or something like that, because he's always thinking about Krishna. Well, he may, you know, it may not be just where, when your job, whatever job you do, think about Krishna as much as you can. Mm -hmm. So he was a greater devotee who that even though he had a job outside that he had Krishna on his mind at least three times a day. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And just one last um, question mm -hmm. is, um, you know, we've been saying throughout the class that it is a combination of our karma free will and Krishna's mercy. But I was wondering if it wouldn't be okay to, to just break it down to um, our free will and Krishna's mercy, since ultimately our karma is really Krishna's gift to us for the sake of the rehabilitation of our consciousness. So in that sense, you know, karma, I see as Krishna's mercy also. Well, see, the reason why I don't see it as that is because karma comes under the material in my mind. You know, it's karma is material. So Krishna, yes, it's a part of his energy, yes, but he doesn't get direct involvement in it, right? He doesn't take direct involvement in the, in the karma. That's just a, a mechanism that he has put in place that he has delegated to Maya Devi to put in place for our rectification. So that's why I, I put it as something separate. Now, Krishna's mercy, that's him. That's him himself personally mm -hmm. coming into our lives. So that's why I, I disagree. I would say those are separate. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? No, I, I see that also. I, I guess I see it both ways because, yes, it, you know, when it comes to um Krishna putting us in charge of Maya Devi he's not taking personal charge of us you know but because he is the one who puts her, us under her you know jurisdiction you know I I still feel that you know it is it is Krishna's care of us, you know, you know, the way I see it is like um, when a parent sends their child to a school, right? The child is, I mean, the parent isn't teaching the child personally. The parent is delegating that responsibility to someone else, you know, but, you know, the, the, that teacher was handpicked by the parent for yeah but you answered like you answered your own question just mm -hmm. now there's still three different people you've got the parent the teacher and the and the kid right yeah you still have three different people that's i mean basically you answered your own question and that's kind of like that achintya beda beda tattva when you think about it because yes it's krishna's energy because yoga maya mahamaya mm -hmm. all those are krishna's energy but it's not his personal involvement so it's like like i said krishna can be part of and not you know is one with and not the same so that's why i distinctly i consider them distinctly three just like your example the teacher the parent and the child yeah and well and and, and so so actually like i was saying I, I i i do see it simultaneously both ways you know I, I see them simultaneously both ways, because also, you know, as devotees, I think, you know, we, we're trying to train ourselves to not see anything as like separate from Krishna, you know, because the definition of matter or, or mat things material is to see them as like disconnected, you know. And so, you know, I'm just trying to see everything as connected to Krishna. And, and, and that's you can't, why, you know, yeah, you, whether it's direct or indirect. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
That's true. Everything is part of Krishna, direct or indirect. But the thing is, we have to come to that realization. We cannot force that realization upon ourselves. We have to come to that realization of actually seeing everything as a part and parcel of as a aspect of Krishna. But if that thought distracts from us becoming pure devotees, then understanding how they work together and yet not together is more helpful in our progress toward Krishna consciousness. Because you can get caught up into the whole idea of this Krishna is doing this karma to me. And that's, I think, is a pitfall. I think that's dangerous for devotees to, to get into. If it's if we have our better understanding of what, how, what was the pitfall? If we can, if we think that Krishna is doing this to me. Mm -hmm. In other words, that our karma is not in the karma. If we don't accept the fact that it is a response, it is because, like it says in this verse, it is that um, um, is suffering the reactions to his past misdeeds. So there is that aspect in there, as according to this verse, right? So we have to accept that aspect that it's not just karma. Yes, karma is something that Krishna has put in place, but karma, Krishna is not giving us this karma. You understand what I'm saying? He's not doing that. That's a reaction that has been put in place by Maya Devi, yes, under the jurisdiction of Krishna, yes. But Krishna is not doing it. And I think it's very important that we, that we differentiate between what Krishna is doing personally, which is mercy, and what he has just given the teacher the responsibility to do. Does that make sense of why I okay. kind of am pulling those things apart purposely? Yeah, well, just to repeat, you're saying that it's important to make that distinction because if we don't, what's, what's the pitfall the, of not making that distinction? Then we will blame, blame Krishna for everything that's happened to us. We, have, we can have a tendency to blame God that oh, God did this to me, that God did this to me. So that's the, that's the, 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 the fear I, that what I said, that, that, that pitfall is what I'm saying. You can accept. Now, if you come to a point where you can accept that, you know, this karma is a part of this aspect of Krishna. Yes. Okay. That's fine. But if you cannot accept that fact, it's hard to, it's, you know, when you're in the, when you're in the throes of suffering, it's very difficult to understand this is all that, you know, this is happening because Krishna's put it in place. Understanding that it's happening because it is my karma and Krishna is giving his mercy by protecting me, which is what this, because that's what this verse says, right? What does this verse specifically say? My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him, that's mercy, all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, that's your free will heart, words, and body is surely eligible for liberation for what has become his rightful claim. So I'm saying that his Krishna's, you're waiting for his mercy. You're waiting for your, his Krishna's mercy, right? And you're patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds. That's your karma, right? And you are offering respectful basis with your heart, words, and deeds. That's your free will, okay? And you, and that makes you eligible for, for, um, for, you for it has become his eligible claim. He is eligible for liberation for his his, his, his his rightful claim. Does that make sense now to you? Why I separate it out like that? Taking that verse just as it is. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know the thing that you know makes you know that um, resonates with me is like when you said that um, you know when you're going through some traumatic experience. Right. Then at that time, um, you know, it might be more challenging to see this as Krishna's mercy. Right. You know, yeah. but, I, you know, there, there's still a part of me that even though that might be challenging, I would still want to feel that is like maybe Krishna's tough love, you know, is mm -hmm. yeah, if it works, then that if it works for you, that's fine. If it works for you, that's fine. You know, in other words, I, I just I, I I would just I just kind of need to see that I am always under Krishna's personal care, whether it's through you know through the yes. mechanism yes. of karma or yes his direct 
handling. Right. And that's that achintya beda beda tattva, which is the understanding that we have, right? Simultaneously one and different, which exactly covers this, covers your understanding too, perfectly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you. And thank you for coming on without me asking. <laughs> so I can see who I'm talking to. <laughs> well, thank yeah, you. I mean, it's only because you were begging. I was before that I spent, I I spent I hate all this time up it's... until then. Huh? I hate him. Per I, I I need to see people. I'm not, I'm a very personal person. Personalist. <laughs> no, believe you me, if you hadn't begged on your knees, <laughs> I would never, I spent the whole Q and A period trying to get ready <laughs> <laughs> to open my camera. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am very honored that you have allowed me to Thank you. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to God. That's the only thing that could have gotten me to do this. <laughs> Hare thank, you. thank you again for class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mata, seeing you for the first time. Thank you for the darshan. <laughs> <laughs> See, everybody got the music. Who was that? That's Sukhasagari, Mataji. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, first time Bashan, thank you so much. <laughs> I hope you're not sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's so much nicer when we could have put a face to the name and the voice because then we feel connected. We want to feel connected. Remember, that's the point, feeling connected. Okay, uh, I think, is that, is it, Mataji, is that all? Is there any more? Can, can we end the call? Hare Krishna, Mataji, Dandavat Pranam. I'm a really Sorry for stepping in so late, but <laughs> Mataji, I just wanted to thank you for, so, so sorry. I just wanted to thank you for uh, this very wonderful session. I couldn't hear the class at all, and I'm so sorry for missing it, but I, I'm glad I at least logged in after 11 and at least got to hear the q and A. I I do have a question for you, Mataji. You make things so simple and, um, may, and you are so practical in your realization. So uh, Mataji, I have a question. Do you have time for it, Mataji? Okay. So my question is, in in just our day to day life, you said like what you were saying. You know, if we don't listen to Harikata, if we don't uh, engage ourselves in something that's Krishna conscious, then uh, our mind automatically it's like a monkey, so it'll keep on uh, trying to find something else to do. Oh, sorry. So my uh, question to you is, Mataji, how do we stop judging other people? And how do we stop feeling that other people are constantly judging us? I, I, I see that. I mean, it's not that I just have this feeling. It is also that I see it in my day-to-day -day life. Like even my parents will be like, oh, okay, what does she think? Okay, now are, is she going to approve this? She's definitely not going to approve it. So that's how my mother also thinks. So I know that the people around me, the way they are talk to me and they ask, also is similar. So I, if I'm not listening to something uh, Krishna conscious or doing something that's related to Krishna, then so many thoughts make me so depressed. So how can I get out of that? Okay, so your question is, how do I, okay, how do I stop worrying about what, it, what other people think? Is that what you're thinking, asking me? I mean, if I point it down how to a How do I stop show? judging people? How do I stop judging people? people and you know just see everyone like even today Vrinda Gopika Mataji had put in a post in the speaker group and that was also on the same lines like what Guru Maharaj wants us to do he wants us to be better people you know how, how am I going to achieve that and that's the question so in other words as I say I'm I'm a person who focuses on the positive so instead of thinking, and because what happens is when we focus on the negative, like I'm not listening or I'm not reading or I'm not, um, I'm not um, being Krishna conscious, well, you're putting that out in the universe. Now we have to understand that these thoughts are very, very powerful. And also I want to put out something else is that as, as you know, you know, the, why do these rushis, why are their curses so powerful? You know, an ordinary person can't do these. Because, why? Because of their potency of their sadhana. So when we are doing our sadhana, that gives us the potency. So even if we're chanting one round, even if we're chanting one good round, 
out of the 16 rounds, even half a good round. We have to understand that that name of Krishna has given us a little bit of potency. And that potency, we can use it for the positive, we can use it for the negative. If we realize that and realize that Krishna is in my hand and I'm in Krishna's hand, we have to realize that the more positive thoughts we put out there, the more positive words we put out there, the more positive things that you put out there, they come back to us. I mean, even in these self-help group these days, all these personal whatever people, how many people are talking about that? Are they just talking about it because it's a gimmick? Possibly. But we know the potency of the name of Krishna. We know the potency of the, the Nama. So we need to understand that the more positive we put out there, the more positive come back, comes back to us. So my suggestion, so if, you're, if you say, oh, this person is talking about that, let's say this person, judging that person, what does my Guru Maharaj say? If you see somebody who does something negative, if you see something negative about that person, then you concentrate on the qualities of that person that you like. Don't think about it. The negative has come. It's come, you can't avoid it, okay? But he has a beautiful voice, or, or he has his tilak, she has her tilak on so nicely. Yes, she, you know, it could be something negative about that, but it could be anything about that person. You, 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 then the thought will come, you put it aside. The negative thought will come, you put it aside, and you fill your head with that positiveness. A practical thing, you do this, it could be about your family. I mean, as you said, you know, I know it's very, very late. If people need to leave, I will not be insulted. If you need to leave, I have no problem. Please, please do. You know, if they want to close, that's okay. You know, it's up, up, it's up to you guys. But, but um, we so many times with our children too, we focus on what they can't do instead of focusing on what they can do. I used to make huge list of all the things I wanted to accomplish and I would cross them out every time I did them. I don't do that anymore. Now I write down, everything that I have done. Like yesterday, I'll, write, I'll tell you exactly what I wrote down yesterday. Like right. I wrote down, I said, I said, um, I have, okay, this is, what, this is what I've done, okay. I walked my 30 minutes, I planted my succulents and it's kind of gone, but I'm, and I was singing Krishna's devotional song. That's what I wrote down in my note. This was yesterday. This was yesterday morning. Now, as I was doing my walking, I was listening to the class. That was just a, that was just the icing on the cake. You know, I had to do my walking, but I listened to the class. I was doing my walking. So I just made my exercise Krishna conscious. You know what, you know what I'm saying? It's when you, you know, so that's what I'm saying. So number one, write down all the good. I got up this morning and I offered my obeisances to my Guru Maharaj and Krishna when I got up. Write it down. That is so empowering. That is so, I said my prayers. I wrote one, I, 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 did, my, I did my 16 rounds. Write it down. And then look at it when you go to sleep tonight. Go look at, go look at that. And I said, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. Don't think about anything negative, nothing. Negative. And then what you do is you say your prayers, right? Gayan, Avacha, everything that I've said, everything you offered to Krishna, you go to sleep. The next morning, you have already started your day positive because you have a list of everything you've accomplished yesterday. Who cares about Mataji, I have, yeah, I'm always very positive. I mean, I feel like, okay, especially like you're talking about rounds, right? So, okay, if I wake up one time and I do my rounds, I'll be like, yes, yes, I did my 16 before this time. I'm so happy. This is perfect. And the next day, I, something will go wrong and I won't be able and to it's gonna it. go wrong remember it's, it's gonna so go wrong just you, just you just gotta keep going you know what it says in this verse I'll tell you what it says in this verse it says one who simply remains alive in Krishna consciousness simply following the regulated principles of bhakti yoga automatically becomes eligible to receive the mercy of the personality of Godhead just stay alive by Seshika Prabhu said this during Sadhu Sangha when I was there all I'm thinking of, I just got to stay alive. Just got to keep my head above water. That's what you focus on. Keep my head above water. Don't focus on any of the negative. Don't just think it, let it go. And then fill it up. Okay. Drop out the stuff. Get it. Fill up your cup with the good stuff. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mataji. 
Okay. I'll go back and listen to the class. If I have questions, I will definitely contact. Yes, you. please definitely. Thank if anybody so has much. any questions offline, please definitely you can ask me. I will answer what I can if I can. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, I just was thinking of something. Uh, um, you know, I just came across in relation to what Mataji. Is it okay to share? Yes, please, please share, share. Yes, definitely. Yeah, actually, this is the reason I. I call Vinita Guruji because uh, this is from your uh, from uh, His Holiness Jay Pataka Swami Maharaj's lecture. So she uh -huh. makes like, very nice summaries, and uh, um, every day she listens to classes like her Guru Maharaj's, and and then she shared it with me. And uh, 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 in one of those uh, lectures, uh, he says that a devotee has to be very independent. I mean, like he should he or she must have the courage to stand apart from the crowd. And I was thinking like how Indulika Mataji was mentioning that uh, many times we are questioning ourselves and doubting like what would others think? And I mean, I think like as a devotee, we need to develop that quality of being able to stand apart from the crowd. And that's what just came to my mind when she asked that question that a devotee needs to be independent because Krishna himself is he's Bharat, he's independent and you know by um, offering devotion service we kind of get some of the qualities uh, divine qualities uh, he has so so in that sense i was thinking uh, maybe if we try to cultivate that attitude that you know as a devotee we will think differently from the world and it doesn't matter you know what others think of us uh, it might help us and um, that's what I just wanted to share, Mataji. And yeah, thanks to Vinita Gandharvika for sharing that. Thank, Thank you. you yeah. And also remember, you may be independent from the crowd, but you're not alone because we're all there. We're all there for each other. That's something we need to really remember. We are there for each other. Sure, Mataji. Like uh, in the assembly of devotees, yes, we have all the strength we want. Yes. But, yes. You know, maybe not, uh, we may not be able to relate with other people who may not yeah. you know introduce yeah. bhakti or the science so yes they tend to think differently right i mean we can yes. see that difference always yes yes thank you so much mataji thank you hi kishna paneshwari mataji dandot pranam this is shyama gauri oh <laughs> i haven't heard you lately oh very yeah. nice to hear you are you not gonna come out okay <laughs> i come but uh, miss i don't speak all the time so that's why <laughs> it's kind of a busy time for me and that's why but thank you so much very very beautiful class thank you thank you, thank you so much yeah, I'm going to see you. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna. So if we can end the class, I think, yes. Are we good? No other comments or questions, I think. Panchakalpaturupyasya krupasindu bhevacha patitana bhavri vaishnavi bhavri ananta koti vaishnavi bhavri jai nama chari sriya haritashtra kuru jai so she is the chaita the pony channel that she made that 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 she was the boy thank you thank you thank you everybody thank you have a nice day thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very very nice class today Thank you. 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 Thank you.